Welcome to Greyhound View. In the programme this week, we take a look at the highlights of the Irish laurels from Cork, the second round of the Ladbrook 600, plus the final of the BCR Press Puppy Derby. But first, we take a trip down memory lane. During the week, we paid a visit to Banagher in County Offaly to meet with Ollie Moran, whose greyhound Ollie's pal won the Puppy Derby 50 years ago. The only archive of the race is an old gramophone recording, which Ollie had hidden in a drawer and only recently found. Well, now here comes that hare, sweeping around the last end, up towards the traps. In just about five seconds now, the hare comes up. One, two, three, four, five, and the third. Rocky Nigger just ahead of Not So Blue, going at the first end now, and uh, Rocky Nigger on the race, so Not So Blue, and Alice Pan is making a run to the inside. Alice Pan up now in the third place. Rocky Nigger still in front, but Alice Pan is coming to the front to go to the third bend. Ali's Pan has won this race even now. He's going away from Rocky Nigger, nothing else matters now in the last bend, and it's still Ali's Pan the favourite, ramping away, home on his own, from Rocky Nigger in the third place. Face on cameo. Don't be I didn't hear that for, for, for I didn't hear that for forty years. I didn't hear it since we had an old record player. And just waiting for the time, the time is fifty nine point eight nine, which is exceptionally fast and incidentally the fastest time done in this race uh in this event this year. So the winner of tonight Looking back at it now, going like going to Harris Cross for us at that time and, and all during the fifties and into the sixties and Shelburne Park Harris Cross, like it was such a it was such an honour to, to have a dog good enough to run in Dublin. I barely remember that the, the dressing up part. I, I got a new coat. And uh, what I remember about was the car. The, the, before we left, the car was in the yard. And the, dog was, the dog was kenneled for the week, two weeks before the final, the week before the final, upstairs in the bedroom. And uh, we used to take turns staying with him. And uh, out in the yard, putting the stuff ready to go on, and it was an all-day job going to Dublin that time. That uh, Jackie, my uncle, Jack Nallan, that's in Hotel Manila now, uh, he, put, he brought out of the bar here, he brought whiskey and brandy and champagne. I remember that going into the boot of the car, because seemingly that time in Harris Cross was only a wine license or something. I remember standing at the first bend in Harris Cross, the little way room was was um, right on the first bend, very near the, the, the boundary of the track, which was a sort of a wicked garden, little gate, white gate and a white fence. So that's where I stood for the final. And up around the third bend, there's a man standing beside me, Mick Burns, Lord of Mercy, from this man. He says he has won when they were up around the third bend. And uh, he, we knew we'd finish. And coming down the street, I was looking up the street, and we hadn't a clue how I was in front until they came down to it, and he was a long ways in front. And I remember with my mother, our rester, uh, after getting the cup, I don't even remember the presentation much, but we walked around from the first bend area right around to the second bend and up the back street. The Dublin people were all around the second bend, up halfway up the back street with the crowd was at it. And uh, one thing that stuck with me mind always, and it's probably the first time I ever heard the word, uh, a man was leaning over the rails, and my mother was carrying the cup, I was leading the dog, and uh, he shouted across to us, uh, the culties can do it. And uh, <laughs> I didn't know whether it was, a, I didn't know what he meant, I didn't know what the culture was at that time, and uh, I didn't know whether it was a compliment or... <laughs> But I know now it was a compliment, and, and uh, they're the little things that stuck in my mind. I, I took it for granted for a long time that it was that easy to win race like. Like there was no... We went up fighting, I think it was six times to Shelburne, with, to Shelburne and Harris Cross with Ali's pal. And like, every night we went up, he won't be distance. The dog was bought as a sapling. When we got him, me and him clicked, I don't know how, but the, the dog was put in my mother's name, and... and uh, uh, to call him my pal, uh, and uh, uh, he was my pal, and I was his pal. But uh, somebody said to me, uh, that I remember him back there about two years ago, that he, he, he wasn't a great dog for the heart. Like, he was off the pace all the time, and, and he used to come with a run. And uh, he was probably 
probably a, a 1950 version of the Late Late Show. And uh, he was good. And they sold them here that time uh, to a Mr. Billings in England. And there was a big loss of publicity about it. There was 3,000 pounds for him that time in 1952. Bye-bye. As a young man, Ollie emigrated to America. On his return home to Ireland, he had a strong desire to get back into the Greyhounds. 25 years ago, he and his wife Mary came across a litter of pups out of Angeline Q, who goes back to Queer Fire, the same damn line as Ollie's pal. They bought two pups and have been successfully training and breeding ever since. Well, now here comes that hare, sleeping around the last end up towards the trap. In just about five seconds now, the hare comes up. One, two, three, four, five, and the service. Rocky Niggle just ahead of Not So Blue. Going at the first turn now is Rocky Niggle on the race of Not So Blue. And Ollie's Pal is making a run on the inside. Ollie's Pal up now in third place. Rocky Niggle still in front. Ollie's Pal is coming to the front to win the third bend. Ollie's Pal has won the race. Ollie's Pal is even now. Not So Blue is going away from Rocky Niggle. Not So Blue is going away from Ollie's Pal. Ollie's Pal is still in front. Ollie's Pal is coming to the front to win the Well, 50 years later, we're here at Harold's Cross for the final of the 2002 Puppy Derby. A great race in prospect. Ten men in trap one. He's the likely favourite, but Fortune Mike in six. He has a big support here for him tonight. Odette will be flying home at the finish, sparkling Joe with the early pace, and in five, Vinny's the best, a really top performer, and Function Premier contesting the early lead. What a race. Let's have a look at the runners for the 2002 Puppy Derby final. In trap won 10 men, the worthy favourite. He set the fastest time in the competition on September 13th in the quarterfinals. He's trained by Paul Hennessy for Tony and Jennifer Howard and Kildare, also bred by Tony and Jennifer. He's a worthy favourite, wearing the red jacket, 10 men. Into Function Premier, owned, trained and bred by Roger Casey for Kill Malak in Limerick. This son of Split the Bill and Bog Lane Beauty has led round the corner in every one of the rounds to date. In trap number three, Odette, the only bitch in the lineup. She's also the most inexperienced, trained by Iron Paddy McCormick. Of course, who won all Irons with Offaly back in 71 and 72. He's owned by Eamon Curley in County Cavan, this a daughter of Larkill Joe and Redwood Lizzie. In trap number four, Sparkling Joe, the son of Smooth Rumble and Sleek at Sally, owned and trained by Cathy Conway in Armagh, trained by Pat McCallum in Belfast County Antrim. In five, Vinny's the best, a powerful performer. Owned by the Bitten Bridal Syndicate in Tipperary Town. This trained by Vincent Lyons, also in Tipperary. Bred by John O'Brien in Kilmallock, County Limerick. And trap number six, the least strand winner, Fortune Mike. Owned and trained by Mary Keenan Kerry. Bred by Michael Walsh down in Nocknagoshal, County Kerry. This is the son of Top Honcho and Don's Bride. He's wearing the striped jackets and he's certain to go very, very close. The favourite here, number one, ten men at five to four. It's nine to four, Fortune Mike in the stripes. 4-1, to one, Trap 2, Punch and Premier, 25-1 to one each of two, Odette and Vinny's the best, and the outsider at 33-1 to one is Sparkling Joe in the black jacket. Well, the last one's all in traps now, won the favourite 10 men, Trap 2, Punch and Premier, in 3, Odette, 4, Sparkling Joe, 5, Vinny's the best, and 6, Fortune Mike, a huge crowd here at Harold's Cross. And away they go on first to show number two. Punch and Premier on the outside. Fortune Mike. The favour was off to a slow start. Ten men. He's in third, but around the opening corner. All oh, trouble in behind. Number one, ten men effective. Out front though, it's number two, Punch and Premier. That leads from Fortune Mike. A gap in third to Odette. Expect a huge finish from her, but down the far side. Number two, Punch and Premier. Fortune Mike trying to close. Back in third, Odette. Now around the bottom two corners. Function Premier leads from Fortune Mike. Here comes Odette. Around the final corner. Fortune Mike now coming up to challenge Fortune Premier. Here comes Odette. Up to the line. Fortune Mike. Odette on the line. Fortune Mike at the gets there, beats number three Odette, back in third, punch in Premier, it is close, 28.40 the winning time, but we're going to side with Fortune Mike. Well, we are expecting a thrilling finish to the final of the BCR Press, Droopy's Vieri, Puppy Derby for 2002, and we certainly got it. Fortune Mike getting up in the dying strides, just to beat number three Odette, back in third, number two, punch in Premier, the winning time, a brilliant 28.40, but what a race it was. The favourite ten men on the inside anticipates the break and misses it. Function Premier, no mistake though. And Fortune Mike out very well as well from six. Now up to the corner, number one, ten men making ground on the inside, but it becomes tight at the corner and ten men checks wide, clips Fortune Mike slightly and out in front goes Function Premier into the back straight. Fortune Mike though quickly back, challenging again. And now Odette has slipped through into third place and is obviously going to be a danger with her flying finish. But down the back, Function Premier by just over a length now from Fortune Mike. Odette closing up all the time in third. And into the third band here, it's Function Premier. Now the supporters of um, second dog Fortune Mike really cheering him home at this stage. But he's inclined to check here, probably wondering 
wondering whether he's going to go inside or outside the leader, and meanwhile Odette has suddenly closed right up on the pair of them. Now Fortune Mike goes outside to deliver his challenge, and watch Odette in the white jacket. She moves in for that rail and delivers her challenge up the inside. It's a thrilling finish. Fortune Mike now takes over, but look at Odette flying, and they come up and hit the line. Oh, inseparable practically. Well, Mike, great performance, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. He really did it in style. He did he? indeed, yeah. Here I'm well known, famous to him. I thought that he, he might have lasted between the third and fourth bend again, but he just came. And I'm delighted anyway to tell you the truth, have handled McCormick. <laughs> because the carry forwards wouldn't able to do it before, but I said I'd manage him tonight. I presume you were happy once he got out of traps and... Well, I was hoping that he was... I was trying to say to you early on that he was a better way than people were saying, you know. And uh, we had plenty of trials, Mike Welch and the whole lot, was Nick Hatton and Donnie myself, we used to train them. And we'd fear dogs at the time and he was able to beat them up, you know, and we were hoping that he'd... He got it right in the night, that's what it is about anyway. Well, Kerry mightn't have done it last Sunday, but they did it tonight. Well, Jez, if they're taking Ellie, they do it. <laughs> Mike, obviously this is the end for this year, is it? For no, 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 no. I'm bursting to go to Limerick with the dad. I want to, there's a puppy stake me up in Limerick and he'll be going there. I owe to the, to the management of people in Limerick anyway because we're there racing as, uh, nearly as often as in Tralee and I want to give it a shot anyway. After that then, it is good night Irene for this year. Well, Mike, great success, well done. Thanks very much. Great great. God bless you. Well, huge celebrations here at Harold's Cross. What a wonderful winner uh, Fortune Mike was, of course, a son of Top Honcho and Don's Pride, a half-brother to the Digital Pride. One wonders, can he go on and capture the Paddy Power Irish Derby next year, a feat which his half-brother did only a couple of years ago. Fortune Mike, a brilliant winner. He won the Lee Strand in Tralee not so long ago. He's come to Harold's Cross. He took him a little while to get his feet together here, but he really has won this in fine style. This is a serious greyhound, and no doubt we'll hear plenty more of Fortune Mike in 2003. Join us in part two for the highlights of the Irish Laurels and the second round of the Ladbrook 600. is the home of the co-op Superstores Irish Laurels, one of the five classics in this country. It first started in 1944 and was run over a distance of 500 metres until the year 1961. From then to the present day it has run over 525 metres. Last year's winner was Sonic Flight, normally trained by Nicky Sava in England, but after his run in the Irish Derby was left in the care of Irish trainer Dolores Ruth. For this year's highlights of the first round we join commentator Mal Keaveney. Dogs are loaded now for this, the opening heat in one, it's the reserve, Samuri Jack, two, Booze Cruz, three, Beaming Heart, Mustang Bertie is in four, Bravo Alpha is in five, Confidence Choice is six, and here comes the traps, and there's a very good break here by Beaming Heart, as indeed by the reserve, Samuri Jack, it's Samuri Jack that leads now from Confidence Choice at that opening bend, and the reserve is going on by a couple of lengths, Beaming Heart still holding on for third, Bravo Alpha now is well up there as well, remember four to qualify, into the open bend now, and it's the reserve, Samuri Jack that's going on by three or four lengths. Bravo Alpha now beginning to challenge and as they come towards the final turn it's still the reserve. Samuri Jack holding on from Bravo Alpha is finishing very strongly but at the line it's Samuri Jack that wins. The winning time 28.42. This is heat number six. In the red jacket we have Ihevui. Bookie Burglar is in two. In the white jacket Lowland Mayday. Midian Dodo is in four. Bell Isle Shadow is in five and six. We have Borna Dasher. Waiting for the traps to rise, and they're away. A very even break. Belle Isle Shadow is well up there, as indeed is Borna Dasher, the well fancied Borna Dasher. Now into the opening bend. It's Belle Isle Shadow now from Borna Dasher. Coming up to show in third, we have Bookie Burglar, and down the back straight they go. Ihevui has moved into fourth. Up front, though, it's Borna Dasher now, leading from Belle Isle Shadow. These two disputing the lead into third. We have Bookie Burglar remaining there as the final turn comes, and it's Borna Dasher now, being challenged by Belle Isle Shadow, but Borna Dasher is going to win here and win quite comfortably. The winning time 28.45. Dogs are housed now for this heat number 10, the distance 525. In one, Willie's Toby, two, Larky River, Cavalier Kid is running in three, Reserve Flax Mill is four, Burberry Boy is in five, and Big John Jarnley is in trap six. And the 
Fast rise and away well is Burberry by from Lark Hill River into the opening bend. Big John Jarnley is also there. Moving on, it's Burberry by now by a length or so from Lark Hill River. Into third is Big John Jarnley. On they go. This is a very fast race. Burberry by is there. So too is Lark Hill River and Lark Hill River has moved in front at the open corner and has gone on by a length or so. Burberry by is holding on. In third is Big John Jarnley and as they come up towards the line, it's Lark Hill River that's going to win in a very fast time. And what a fascinating run here tonight by Lark Hill River, winning in a new track record time of 28-21. Heat number 11, and in one we have Coomlegan Mel, Vital Tune is two, Clover Hare is three, Carrageen Lord is four, Animore Billy, the strong favourite, five, and Fast Fitz Paquita is in trap six. We wait for the hare to arrive, and he has arrived, and well away is Animore Billy. That to be expected. Clover Hare is there as well, into the opening bend. It's going to be pretty close here, and it's Animore Billy that's gone in front from Clover Hare. In third, we have Coomlegan Mel. In four, Carrageen Lord. Down the back straight they go, and Animore Billy holding on by a length or so from Clover Hare. In third, Coomlegan Mel. Still there also is Carrageen Lord. Up front, though, and it's Animore Billy going on by a couple of lengths, and off the final bend they go. Animore Billy is going to win here with something to spare against uh, Clover Hare. Here. The winning time 28.31. The newest competition on the calendar, the Labrock 600, with a winner's purse of 20,000 euro. It's no surprise that some of Ireland's top greyhounds are in action. One such greyhound is Heavenly Hero, who finished third behind Bypass Byway in the Derby a fortnight ago. Meanwhile, they're going to traps for the opening heat, so I better get out of the way. First quarter final in the Ladbrook 600. Trap one, correct Rebecca. In two, Duffy's Hurricane. Three, South Lodge Doddy. Four, Governor. Five, Niels Fiddler. Trap six, vacant. Bold Mossy and Absentee. The favourites, Governor, from trap four. As the hair comes behind traps. And away they are. It's quite a level start. Governor out quite well from four. Duffy's Hurricane and correct Rebecca going up well into the inside. But number five, Niels Fiddler shows the best early pace to lead into the band. From number four, Governor in second. Number one is next, correct Rebecca. Number two, Duffy's Hurricane had to check. Down the back straight. Number five, Niels Fiddler in front. This one faded on the run home last week. The favourites in second, Governor, strong finisher. Duffy's Hurricane really beginning to motor back in third, but a lot of ground to make up. Turning for home, it's number five, Niels Fiddler still in front by a few lengths from Governor. He's coming fast, and here comes number two, Duffy's Hurricane with a big run on the inside but it's Governor gets up on the line Governor wins at the favourite from number five Neil Fiddler in second and Duffy's Hurricane number two in third the time 33-17 the second quarter final in trap one is Santin Chateau two Anelka three Ashcarn Blackie four Charlie Bird five the favourite top of the best and in six is Pinewood Gull as the hair now comes around the final bend just behind traps and they're off, and it's number three off to a flyer, Ashcarn Blackie, but number five, top of the best, is well positioned, going to the corner, and on the inside, number one, Santin Chateau, around the opening bend, and number three in front, Ashcarn Blackie, in second place, taking up now on the inside, Santin Chateau, but here comes number five, top of the best, and look at number four, Charlie Bird is in threatening position, as the head to the third bend, the favourite takes it up, top of the best, in second place, number one, Santin Chateau, and three, Ashcarn Blackie, and here's Charlie Bird, number four, with his run, but he's held up there, and it's top of the best out front, top of the best, racing on up the straight, he's going to win this one impressively Charlie Bird disappointing again as top of the best wins it number five from number one Santin Chateau in second place and number three Ashcan Blackie appears to have held on for third the time 32-79 a big run the third quarter final in trap one Borna Pilot in two the favorite Heavenly Hero three South Lodge Bow four Spartacan five Drowned Kingdom and in six we have Tall Chubby the hair now comes behind the traps Ready for off and Heavenly Hero gets away well again from trap two. Number four going up well Spart again, but it's Heavenly Hero on the inside. Number six showing a big turn of pace. Tall Chubby takes it up on the bend from number two Heavenly Hero. Number one Borna Pilot is in third. Heading into the back and Tall Chubby is in front. He's putting it up to them. Number two Heavenly Hero second and look at Borna Pilot flying down into the third bend. It's going to be a bit of a jam here and it's number six Tall Chubby gets around the third bend in front. Number two Heavenly Hero second. Number one Borna Pilot third. This is a race. But it's Tall Chubby in front, Heavenly Hero putting in a run, Borna Pilot on the far side putting in a run, but it's Tall Chubby, Tall Chubby holds on from number one, Borna Pilot, probably be a full finish with number two, Heavenly Hero in third, but quite a race, we said this was an improving young dog, Tall Chubby, and he certainly is that, he's won in 32.80. The fourth quarter final, in trap one is Barry McBargan, two sign on Starlight, three Lenny's friend, four moving customer, five Diego Glory, and six Crossley Lark. 
the hair coming up behind traps ready for off but away they go number two off that's that sign on starlight showing in front on the run up this one stays number five diego glory going up strongly on the outside it's number two sign on starlight in front now number five takes over that's diego glory number three lenny's friend putting in a run in third then number one bally mcbarg and number six crusty lark and moving customers way at the rear again as diego glory leads into the second last man this one was the gamble and it's four lengths clear from number two sign on starlight number three lenny's friend here's moving customer but he can't get up to win this can he as we come up the straight it's number five diego glory six crossy lark and here comes moving customer but he's too late and i think diego glory just holds on from crossy lark in a very tight finish with moving customer coming with that traditional late late run the time 32.99 well, we've just seen the quarter-final heats of the Labrook 600, and I'm with Richard Harkness of the sponsors. Richard, what was your initial reaction tonight to the first heat, we'll say? Um, the first heat, I thought that uh, Governor did well after not breaking as I thought he might have led round. And, uh, you know, having, having picked up Nils Fiddler tonight, I thought it was a fair performance. Um, you know, disappointed with the withdrawal of Bold Mossy, but these things happen. What price will Governor be? Uh, Governor now would be 25 to 1. Uh, Niels Fiddler ran a good race in second. He does, but he just doesn't stay. I, I still make him the outsider of the field at 150 to 1. And Duffy's Hurricane, who ran on well for third? Duffy's ran on very well, but again, just lacking a bit of, bit of pace, and uh, the time was quite slow, um, 50 to 1. Top of the best, a powerful winner of the second heat. He'd be among the favourites, I'd imagine. Uh, yep, yeah, he's uh, certainly come forward in the uh, in the betting now, and he's, he's we've put him clear third in at full, uh, fourth in, sorry, at 5 to 1. Stanton Shadow ran quite well behind him. Uh, from a very good draw, but again, just ran round, just not sure he's quite got the pace in these 33s. And Ashcarn Blackie, trained by a, a real regular here at Shelton Park, Skippy Gilbert. He finished uh, third. He did, yeah, again, looks like he's just lacking a, a yard of pace, and he's 50 to 1. The big guns were out in the third heat, a bit of a shock with Tall Chubby winning. Um, yeah, I suppose it was. Uh, everybody expected one or two to win, um, but you know he wasn't really out of it. It's just from a very good draw as well. That there was always a question whether Bourne Apart would get involved with Heavenly Hero. Um, he's still an improving greyhound. What sort of price are we going now? Uh, Tall Chubby. He's got the third favourite now at four to one. Four to one. And the pair behind him, Bourne Pilot and Heavenly Hero, uh, make them joint favourites now at five to two. Um, couldn't really split them. Diego Glory just holding the two fast finishers. What way do you rate the three of them? Um, Diego Glory, he looked all the way around the track like something was going to get to him and they never quite did. Um, I've put him in at 16 to 1, he's a, he's a sort of not sure price really. He could be bigger, he could be a lot shorter, but I've had to put him there at the moment, bearing in mind the front two are still there. Crossley Lark, Oaks runner-up, she flew home tonight. She did, um, good performance tonight. Um, I've actually put her in in front of Diego Glory in the outrights at 10s. And moving customer, a real enigmatic performer, a real favourite here at Shelburne Park. Yeah, his, his style of running suits the public and strong off the back. And um, I've left him at eight to one as we were beforehand. Um, I think he still might play a hand in this event yet. Hard to see him not qualifying. Indeed, he's always going to stay on strongly to qualify. Well, good racing next Saturday night. We'll see you then. Richard. Lovely, thank you. Next week we bring you the two finals from Lifford, plus the semi-finals of the Ladbrook 600 and the heats of the Irish Laurels. For further information on Irish Greyhound racing, ownership and syndication, visit our website at www.igb.ie or email us at admin at igb.ie.